When the pandemic started taking hold in the US back in February, many of us probably remember that the stock market tanked. In fact, off of its high in February, the S&P 500 dropped 34% in just over a month of trading. But since then, as of this recording in mid-August, it's back up 50%. And yet it's still ever so slightly off that February high. How can that be? How can the S&P 500 go down 34%, then bounce back up 50%, and still not have fully recovered? I'm Jeff Gallick, and in this Data Demystified Data Byte, we'll unpack how to think about percent changes and learn how equally sized increases and decreases are not at all symmetric. If you stick around to the end of this video, you'll not only develop an intuition for how to think about increases and decreases in values, but you'll be able to apply that intuition to important topics like changes in the stock market, product prices, and even some sports statistics. So how did we see a drop of 34% then a rise of 50% only to get back to just shy of where we started? To understand that, we need to take a big step back and try to understand how the same percent decrease is very different from the percent increase. To do that, we're going to enlist the help of our friends, the boxes. I actually think that the intuition behind this is something you already likely have the beginnings of, but I'm going to spell it out to make things crystal clear. Let's say that I have 10 boxes and I increase the number of boxes by 100%. To do that, I just figure out how many boxes I have to begin with, 10, then add 100% more. Well, 100% of 10 is just 10, so we now have 20 boxes. Easy enough. Now let's say I want to decrease the number of boxes by 100%. Again, I just figure out how many boxes I have, 20 this time, and get rid of 100% of them. Well, if I get rid of 100% of what I have, I'm obviously left with nothing. So we already see very clearly that increasing a value by some percent and then decreasing by that same percent doesn't get to where we started. And that is entirely because the impact of a percent change increase is not the same as a percent change decrease. The 100% example is easy enough to follow because we all kind of get that if I take 100% away of anything, I'm left with nothing. But the intuition isn't as clear for smaller differences. If I tell you that the price of a product went up 20% and then went down sale for 20% later, I bet your knee-jerk reaction is to say that the price of that product has returned back to its original price. It hasn't. In fact, after increasing by 20% and then decreasing by the same 20%, the price actually dropped 4% overall. Let's see why with our friends the boxes again. Let's start with 100 boxes this time. If we increase the boxes by 20%, that's easy enough to understand. 20% of 100 is just 20 more boxes, so now we have 120 boxes. But now we're going to decrease by 20% off this new value 120. Well, 20% of 120 is 24. So when we take away 24 boxes, we're left with only 96 boxes, or 4 less than we had to start. Again, an identical increase and decrease in percentage terms results in something other than our original value. I think this is particularly unintuitive because we're used to adding and subtracting a whole lot more than multiplying and dividing. If I have 100 boxes and add 10, then subtract 10, we are back to where we started. But as we saw a moment ago, that's not true for increasing and decreasing by percentages. So how do we fix our intuition to make this idea really clear? Before we get into that, if you like what you see, please take a moment to like this video, subscribe to this channel, and click that little bell icon so that you don't miss out on any new content that I put out. With that said, let's work on that intuition behind percent differences. The key here is realizing that percentage differences are always relative comparisons. That means that 10% in one context isn't the same as 10% somewhere else. This is very different from other types of changes we're used to thinking about. If the price of something goes up by $10, the interpretation of that is the same regardless of whether the product initially cost $100 or $10,000. $10 is $10. But if the price of a product goes up by 10%, it matters a whole lot what the original price was to get a full understanding of what actually happened. If the original price was $100, a 10% increase means you'll be spending $10 more. If the original price was $10,000, you'll be spending $1,000 more. And as we saw before, this is made even more complicated when you have stacked increases and decreases in percentages. Beyond just realizing that percentages are relative, we see stacked increases and decreases in percentage terms used incorrectly all the time, and not just with identical increases and decreases, like with the examples I showed before. For example, a baseball player has a bad season and his batting average goes down by 20%. The next year, he's looking much better and his batting average goes up by a whopping 25%. He must be on fire. Actually, no, he's exactly where he started. Imagine sales for some product were up 30% in Q1, but down only 25% in Q2. Good thing we're still ahead, except that we're not, since sales are actually down two and a half percentage points overall. These types of errors in reasoning are everywhere, and we need to be careful to avoid such incorrect conclusions. Now, before we get back to our original example of the S&P dropping by 34% and then rising 50%, I wanna show you this. 
This shows what happens when you take any number, increase it by some percentage, and then decrease it by the same percentage. As a side note, the order in which you do this, increase first or decrease first, doesn't matter at all. All that matters is that you have an increase and a decrease in percentages. Anyway, the line tells you what you're left with after this increase and decrease. Two things are worth pointing out. First, if you increase and decrease by a percentage that is less than 100%, the amount you're left with is always smaller than what you started with. As an example, if you take a number and increase it by 50% and then decrease that new number by 50%, you're left with 75% of whatever you started with. The other thing to point out is that as the percent you increase and decrease by gets bigger, the final value gets smaller. So if you increase and decrease by just 1%, you're mostly back to where you started. But if you increase and decrease by 80%, you're left with a tiny fraction of what you started with. I bring this up to help you understand that when you hear about percent increase and decrease stacked together like the examples we've talked about here, there's a temptation to think that nothing has happened. But as you can see here, depending on how big those percent changes are, a whole lot may have changed. So let's close this out by returning to our first example with the S&P 500. By now I hope you can see why a drop of 34% and a rise of 50% can get us back to almost where we started. Back in February, the S&P was valued at 3,386 points, and then in March it went down to 2,237 points. That was a 34% drop. Then it went back up to 3,372 points in August. When we calculate the increase, we do it from that March low, so we wind up with an increase of about 50%. The final key takeaway, though, isn't that the market is up 50%, rather it's actually still down a little bit less than 1% from the high that it was back in February. So when you see news stories talking about how the market has had one of the fastest increases in history, that's true, but it's all relative to the fact that it also had one of the fastest crashes in history. If you ignore the context, you'll miss out on what's actually going on. I hope you realize that what we've covered here is a recipe for how to think about all types of percentage differences we see in the world. If you realize that increases and decreases in terms of percentages aren't the same thing, you'll have a much easier time living in our data-rich world. If you found this interesting, please take a moment to like the video, subscribe to this channel, and click that little bell icon to get notified when new content comes out. Also, if there are other topics in the world that involve data and you want to get a better intuitive understanding of them, post a comment below and I'll do my best to make content meant just for you, my viewers.